Welcome to performing the labor interview inspector training. The labor interview report is used to monitor payments made on federal aid construction projects. It provides the monitoring of proper classifications, wage payments, and knowledge of the EEO officers and bulletin board. The regulations that govern wage payments and equal opportunity are FHWA 1273, 29 CFR 5.5 Section C, and FDOT Compliance Manual Chapter 6.4. The labor interview form is two pages long. It helps assess the employee's knowledge on their wages and helps determine if they are being subjected to any discriminatory practices. The number of interviews required on a project will be determined based on the original contract dollar amount illustrated in Table 6.4.3 of the Contract Compliance Manual. Additional interviews may be conducted above the minimum. This minimum requirement is completed for the life of the project and it is a monthly requirement. It is not a cumulative number. The required minimum number of interviews per month must be completed. Who gets interviewed? Interviews are conducted on a random basis. They must be completed across all contractors active on the project. A cross-section of active contractors will help ensure that a diversity of workers are being interviewed. All workers are subject to an interview with the exception of surveyors, supervisors, and QA QC testers. These people do not need to be interviewed in order to meet the required minimum. Interviews are performed on both the prime and subcontractors and they are performed by the RCS, inspectors, and any other compliance delegate. Considerations when performing interviews. There may be situations in which an employee, which was randomly selected for an interview, cannot speak English. In these situations, you will need to find someone on site that can act as a translator. If you cannot locate anyone, Please get the employee's name, number, and preferred language and give this information to the RCS. The RCS will then coordinate a meeting with the employee and a proper translator to conduct the interview. You will still fill out the observation sections H, I, and J to notate what they were doing on the day of the interview. This process is in place to ensure that employees are not being excluded from the labor interview pool simply because they cannot speak English and it still meets the requirement of choosing employees at random. Interviews are confidential. No other employees or supervisors are to be within listening distance. If someone happens to walk by and tries to correct the employee's answers, please disregard their comments. You are to write down the answers the employee themselves give. Do not send labor interviews to the contractor under any circumstances. Section A, RCS's project identification. This is the specific project information. This section will be filled out by the RCS on the template for submittal to the project staff for use in the field. Section B, interviewer's identification. This is general information about the interviewer. Once interviewing, please fill out your first and last name, sign, fill out your employer, and the date of interview. Please refrain from pre-filling out the form and putting an anticipated date of interview. If this date of interview is missed and the form is still utilized, it can cause discrepancies when trying to match up the interview, the payroll, and the daily work report. So please make sure that the correct date of interview is entered.
Section 1, Identity Data Supplied by Employee. This is basic background information of the employee. Remember, all labor interviews are confidential and must be conducted outside of earshot of anyone else on the project. Number one, employee first name, last name, and signature. Please note this form is not to be given to the employee to fill out. The only thing the employee will complete is the signature after the interview is completed to confirm all answers. Do not put abbreviations. Please spell out whole names. Number two, employee ID or last four of Social Security. There are situations in which an employee does not wish to give their Social Security number or does not know it. In these situations, please notate that they refuse to give or does not know. Number three, employed by. Please ensure the employee understands that this refers to their actual employer, the company that pays their paychecks, not the company they are subcontracted to. Number four, how long with the company? Indicate the length of time in months and or years. Number five, how long on this project? Again, indicate length of time in months and or years. Number six, employee sex. Currently, the only options are male and female. If the employee does not wish to identify as either or wishes to identify as something else, please notate as such. Number seven, employee race. Indicate race. If the employee does not wish to disclose or does not know, please notate as such. Section two, job and pay data supplied by employee. Number eight, what is your job or position? Please write down the answer the employee gives regardless of what they were observed doing or what prior knowledge you have about their duties. This is important as we need to ensure the employee understands their job title. Number nine, how much are you paid an hour? Sometimes an employee does not want to disclose this information. If so, please notate as such. Number 10, are you paid every week? Mark yes or no. Number 11, do you receive time and a half for hours worked over 40? Mark yes or no. Number 12, did the company pay for your hard hat and vest? If an employee answers no, please be sure to ask follow-up questions. Ask if they brought their own willingly or if their employer made them pay for their PPE. There is a comment section on the form in which clarifications can be written. Number 13, have you seen the project bulletin board with wage and job posters? If the employee says no, USC inspector can inform the employee where the board is. However, you will still check no as their answer. It is the prime's responsibility per their contract documents to inform all employees, not just their own, of the board location. Number 14, were you told to give someone money or favors to get this job or to keep your job? Please be sure to check the correct answer for this question. A common mistake is to check yes, since all previous answers are usually yes. Section three, deduction data supplied by employee. Number 15, is money taken from your check for insurance, loans, uniforms, child support, etc.? Please check all that apply. Section four, fringe data supplied by employee. Number 16, are you paid for holidays, sick days, vacation? Sometimes an employee is not yet eligible for these benefits due to being a new hire or opted not to receive them altogether. Please indicate these situations in the comments section. Number 17, does the company pay any of your insurance? This refers to the company actually paying a portion or all of the insurance benefit. This doesn't refer to the company just offering it for the employee to pay. Number 18, employee comments explanations. As mentioned before, any additional comments, clarifications, etc., would go in this item. If there are no further comments, please mark none. Section C, interviewer's observation. Letter H, describe employee's work you observed at time of interview. This is the focal point of the labor interview. 
In this section, it is imperative that the employee's activities are documented accurately and in detail. It is also important to note if an employee is just assisting in a task as opposed to being a journeyman or completely independent and not needing supervision. I. Lists describe the tools equipment the employee was using or operating. Mark no tools and no equipment if neither was used, but be aware that this must match up with the observation. For example, if you observe the employee demoing concrete, it is unlikely that they did not use any tools or equipment. So if you mark no tools and no equipment, the RCS is going to reach out for further clarification. Information noted in items H and I must coincide and be as detailed as possible in order for the RCS to determine the correct classification for the employee. J. Interviewer comments. Any additional comments can be written in this section, including if the employee is an OJT trainee. Timely submittal. Timely submittal is key in the event clarifications are needed. If interviews are submitted months after they were conducted, it will be difficult for you as the interviewer to remember details if a discrepancy was discovered. As the eyes and ears for the RCS, the RCS relies on you for accurate observations and will reach out to you if any clarifications are needed. Section D, RCS's review and action. This section will be completed by the project RCS when the observation is reviewed against the certified weekly payroll, EEO data, and other compliance related information. If you look at the item L, this item is separated into two columns. One is labeled as shown on payroll. The other is as indicated in observation. The as indicated in observation column is where the RCS determines the correct job classification the employee should be reported in according to the task you, the inspector, observed them doing. For example, if you observed an employee hauling lime rock using a dump truck, the RCS will determine that the correct classification is dump truck driver. The as shown on payroll column is where the RCS indicates the classification the employee was actually reported in on the payroll. The two are then compared to ensure that the employee was classified and paid according to their actual duties performed or a higher classification. The employee can be paid more, but not less. The remaining sections of the RCS review are to indicate what type of discrepancies, if any, were found on the labor interview as opposed to the payroll and any actions the RCS took to resolve any payroll violations. Best practices. Interview different people throughout the life of the project. Do not interview employees from the same contractor throughout the whole project. It is imperative to receive a cross section of interviews. Completeness and accuracy are important. The RCS may reach out to you to resolve any discrepancies identified during the review process. Complete interviews in the beginning of the month to avoid no work situations later. Remember, the required number of interviews is not a cumulative number for the entire length of the project. Missed interviews one month are not to be made up the next month. It is a monthly requirement. Payrolls will substantiate if enough workers were on site to interview. However, if you choose to obtain more than the required amount, that is acceptable. All interviews obtained will count toward the month in which they were conducted. Extra interviews do not roll over to the next month. This concludes the Performing a Labor Interview Inspector Training.